Oh, hey. Do you ever play Scooby Doo on Mask? GameCube, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo DS? I'm a person. Please wait. I'm a person, just like you. Happy birthday if it's your birthday. Happy future birthday if it's in the future. Happy belated birthday if it's in the past. My name is Lime Green, and today, where, where is it? Not this one. We're talking about Scooby-Doo Unmasked for the Nintendo game. Scooby-Doo Unmasked is the final game in what I like to call the Scooby-Doo Trilogy on GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. It all starts on Nia of 100 Prides, which is like the game to play if you're a Scooby-Doo fan. And then continues on in 2003 in Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem. I got this from GameStop. And then 2005 gave us Scooby-Doo Unmasked, which is a platformer, which some may say just kind of completed the trilogy, but I think it did more than that. You know, Scooby-Doo Unmasked, basically gave us, you know, lived up to its name. Uh, you can change between three different costumes. You can play as like a Kung Fu Scooby, which he can fire Kamehameha's from his fists. Like, if that doesn't sell you on this game, then I'm not sure what will. Then there's like Robin Hood Scooby who can fire plungers and like he's second best I guess. That, <laughs> that's the only cool thing about Robin Hood Scooby. And then there's like Adam Weston is in this game. So there's Fat Scooby, and he just flies around. And yeah, there's Fat Scooby. And so, you know how everyone says Five Nights at Freddy's popularized and they started the scary animatronic like genre? Well, I guess, but everyone forgets that Scooby-Doo Unmasked started it. Like, the whole story of the game is basically animatronics are going wild and you gotta stop them. It's just in, the animatronics are made out of blubber, which is a substance that like makes them move and it's edible. And the best, it's almost like blubber, I guess. Mubber, blubber, I don't know. And it's edible. And I, I don't remember if they really say what it tastes like. It can be like anything. And it's kind of scary <laughs> almost because when you beat them in game, they just kind of like dissolve into like skeleton animatronic form and they're lying on the ground and when you start like attacking them you start smoking them slowly like it, it's kind of spooky for a scooby-doo game almost <laughs> that's what i kind of like about this game it's it's spooky but not like too overly spooky like there's this one clown song I like in the circus uh, stage, I'll play for you at one uh, point, and 
I guess right now. And it's, I, I think I could actually hear it in like a haunted, like a haunted house. It's, it's kind of scary, honestly. Uh, what else do I like? Another thing I like about this game is the stages. In this one world, it's like a haunted amusement park, and it has this like ghostly haunted water slide, and you jump down it, and it's got like this dirty, like, almost like grimy effect while you slide down it, and that's a, that's a nice touch if they intended it that way. Like, I really like that every time I'm playing that level. It's almost like it's abandoned and nobody's used it for, like, decades. Like, some of those Urban Explorer videos you see on YouTube, that, that's what it reminds me of. This is also the world that I think has the scariest enemy, which is, I think they call it the Fire Breathing Groupie. I'll show you a picture, like, right here. It's like it just has a creepy laugh. It goes, <laughs> and it, it's actually the voice by Mei Ling from Metal Gear Solid. It's it's weird. Like all the enemies in this game. <laughs> learned while researching this video they are like made to be stronger than you i think because they all have counters they all like pretty much reflect or kind of reflect your moves and you're like kind of weaker than them almost you're made to be like scared of them and that, that's kind of cool for a Scooby-Doo game. You're, you're Scooby-Doo, you're supposed to be scared of your enemies. Now the boss fights in this game are really cool, except for the ones in the DS game. Like the DS game, they're, they're kind of really different and I get what they're going for. Like the DS one, like you run around, you press little buttons on the bottom screen, like, you open doors, you shut doors on the bosses, it's kind of weird. It uses the DS's, like, DS-ness, it's, I, I get what they're going for, it's Nintendo DS. But all the other versions, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. The first boss is, uh, Zentuo, uh, you find him in, like, Chinatown, and you find him on a rooftop as the Kung Fu Ninja Scooby and he commands this huge Chinese dragon.
could actually upgrade your ninja outfit to have like these shockwave like ground pound things. And I think the first boss fight is kind of really cool. You're shooting like shockwave Hadoken Kamehameha's at him at the dragon while he's flying around on the rooftop and that, that's the whole boss fight. Uh, occasionally he uh, uses UV light which I forgot to mention can melt off your mother suit and uh now yeah, that's I think it's the best boss fight in the game. The second boss fight is uh you're facing the guitar ghoul, which is the only original enemy or original boss. And you fight him in like a mirror room. Mirror what is it called? A mirror mirror place? <laughs> All the mirrors. Uh you fight as him with Bat Scooby, and you don't really use Bat Scooby in the fight, so I guess cool music, but you don't use Bat Scooby to fight him. You don't use him to take advantage of the fight. So, yeah. <laughs> and then the third, the third boss fight. You fight the caveman in like this planetarium and they made power-ups for this fight. They give you a spaceship for this fight. You're fighting a caveman in a planetarium. In a spaceship. Like, this is like they didn't need to give you like all this random stuff, but they did. And this is like a one-off fight. Like, it's kind of crazy that you can't even like revisit the fight afterwards. Now, spoiler alert, if you haven't played this game, this is your last chance. The final boss of Scooby-Doo Unmasked they just put it on the cover here. This is the final boss. They, they, the final boss is just a regular, a regular enemy, and they just make him bigger. His final theme, though, I like to shout out that it's, it's kind of like the Monsters Unleashed, you know, Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed theme, but kind of hidden in his theme. Uh, that's kind of cool if <laughs> that's what they meant to do. If they ever remade this or decide to give it <laughs> like a sequel or something is like... Like do like a night or day like time thing. Like it would be cool if you're exploring like a haunted place during the day. I think that would be kind of cool. Kind of like what Pokemon, <laughs> it's funny to say, but like what Pokemon does almost. Like, I think it would be cool if you're exploring like a haunted, like they have like a museum, but it would be cool if you're exploring the museum like early in the morning and then like it takes so much time and then the case ends like at midnight the next day or you know you explore you know early night and then it takes all day and then you know early morning the case ends or another thing i thought of is there could be multiple people that could have done it and the, you collect clues in this game and you know multiple people could have done it and you decide who who did it scooby-doo in the spooky swamp you get to pick out uh out of the lineup who you think did it but you know 
there's only one person who could have done it. I think it would be cool if you get to decide, uh, you know, who you think did it and, you know, have different outcomes. But that might be, like, a little more development, but I think it would, <laughs> it would be, like, a really cool game idea. Uh, I think the final thing I like about this game, and it's like the smallest thing in the world, but it's like you collect food and uh, Scooby and Shaggy, <laughs> like you get to like make it into like a giant meal for like Scooby and Shaggy, and that's how you collect health tokens and it can be like cotton candy and like spinach and ham and ice cream and just like imagining like a meal out of like all these things it, it that <laughs> that's just the funniest thing in the world to me that's pretty much all there is left to say about scooby-doo on mass it's adam west you dress up as other things i guess it would be cool if there's like more than just three, like a Lego Scooby costume, like to show off there's a Lego Scooby movie, I guess, in 2016. Or like, it would be like a wizard Scooby to show uh, Warner Brothers has Harry Potter or something. Like, Scooby Doo and Mass. Me and Scooby Doo and Mass have a long history. It was one of the first uh, video games I had, along with Mario Party 7 and Scooby-Doo <laughs> Scooby and the Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I never did get this uh, child's, mo child's movie ticket inside. And uh, when I got Mario Party 7, I didn't even know like who Mario was. I thought he was... I thought Mario was a Hammer Brother. But, uh, you know, n now I know uh, what a fire emblem is. Catch you next time. Catch you on the flip side. Flop side. Flip side. Flop side. Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Thousand Year Old Door. M64. Nintendo Switch. Buy it today.